Um, okay, so let's get to what this this um, this live stream is about. Um, in my time um, at the University of Miami, and actually seeing a bunch of um, what, what did you write there? Oh, you like the story? Okay, leave it. All right, I'll leave it. Um, during my time at the University of Miami and seeing like, I mean, what must have amounted to hundreds, like hundreds of clinics. You know, we would have these, if you don't know what a clinic is, it's not like, um, you know, where they check your blood pressure or what have you. Um, there would be somebody who would come and play. Man, don't eat walnuts before a live stream. I feel like walnuts are like <laughs> everywhere. Not walnuts, sorry. Um, um, and these guys would come and then they would play and then there would be a time when um, when there would be um, these question and answer situations. And inevitably, inevitably, especially if the guy was a, uh, like Bob Mincer, you know, these sax players, Michael Brecker, Pat Metheny, um, Hiram Bullock, I mean, Michelle Petrucci, not Michelle Petrucci, Michelle Petrucci. Um, I, I mean, just like everyone, everyone, I would always hear the same question. Yeah, um, uh, uh, what are you thinking about when you're playing over? And, you know, in the beginning, I was asking the same question. What are you thinking about when you play over? And the question itself, I, I mean, I understand where the question comes from. The, the question is an important question. And when you are learning to improvise, even if you're learning to, you know, do, you know, that. Just something like that. You want to know, I mean, if you're just learning how to actually push the strings and press the strings, that's a whole other topic. But if you're learning to, you know, improvise and you're playing these particular shapes and patterns, you want to know like where, where to use them. So where do you use them? Then you get to this thing. Okay, when A7 comes, I'm going to go or there's a lot of delay. I'll deal with that in a second. Um, so you're trying to figure out like what you are thinking. What are you supposed to think when this card comes by? Hence for the, um, that, that question that you're constantly asking, which is what are you thinking about when blah, blah, blah. So what are you thinking? What are you thinking? As if, if the person told you, you know, what the thoughts were, that you would somehow have more insight to what's going on. Now, I, I don't think that that's, um, I don't think that that's going to lead you anywhere. Uh, I'm trying to push this. <laughs> don't use your guitar for this. There we go. <laughs> I have like some bats sleeping and I wanted them to. Um, so how can we make sense out of that question? How do we make sense out of, um, yeah, so what do you think when, if, if I told you what I was thinking when this card came by, it, it, if I put it into words, it might be a jumble. It might be, well, I, I sure hope Juan likes me after his solo. Um, I hope Brian is impressed by this. Um, where did my fingers go again? Uh, am I going to play this pattern? Uh, why don't I just play this thing that I always do? Uh, you know, like there's this like whole litany of things that you think about and that the performer, especially in the clini clinic um, situation, is thinking about. So what we want to try to do is to devise a system on how we practice what we are trying to play, 
okay? And that is the answer to what you are thinking about. Do you get what I'm saying? If I have this chord that I'm gonna play over, C minor 11, and I just go. Okay, so my, my little vamp is this. And, and let's say, for example, that I'm going to work, this is my first time ever doing it. So I, I wanna start from that perspective because you can take that perspective and expand it into wherever you are um, along the, your musical journey, the spectrum of learning how to improvise, etc. So if I've never played triads over that groove, what I want to do first is I want to figure out where these triads appear, where I'm familiar with. Because I find that too many guitar teachers, in fact, every guitar teacher says, um, oh, they'll put this on and they'll go like this. Okay, so what, what you do is you can use um, E flat, F, and B flat. And then before you know it, they're like... And then they play all this. But you're, you seriously are lost and it, it becomes a frustration. And then that in turn fuels the, the question. Yeah, so uh, what are you thinking about when you play? Because you never had an answer. You never could come to an answer. So what you want to do is you need to pare everything down, pare it down to its bare minimum. Okay, I know an E flat triad and an F triad, and these are major, of course, um, if you're not familiar with this, whenever musicians, <laughs> that's funny in itself, whenever musicians talk about triads, unless otherwise delineated, you can pretty much expect that they're talking about major triads, okay? Simple. Now, there's a rule that says you can play major triads starting from the flat third, the fourth, and the flat seventh, of minor seven chords. Yes, there are other ones you can use. Hold your horses, don't worry about them right now because three of them are enough, okay? They're enough to cause confusion. So, more confusion than that. <laughs> See where I got my finger? Those pipes will cause massive confusion to listeners and the players of them as well. So, or alike. So from the flat third, from the fourth, and from the flat seventh. So that is respectfully E flat, F, and B flat in a C minor seven chord. So what I want to do is I want to figure out, first of all, how, how do I play these triads? Okay, I know it goes like this. I'm just gonna do it su super simple, like um, transposable. There's my E flat. There's my F. And there's my B flat. Brilliant. I know that those work over the C minor 7 chord. Now, I can already hear the chorus of guitar experts on YouTube saying that, well, you got to learn them all over the neck. You need to learn them all in one position when all of the permutation. Come on. We are just trying to start from how do I do this bloody thing and then we can worry about like all the different permutations, inversions, and, and the different ways you should be able to play them on the neck and the spread versions and all of that stuff. But throwing them out, like if, if somebody throws them out to you, all of them, you literally, I mean, there's a part of you that feels like, oh my God, I really got... I really got my value. I got so much stuff to work on. Then you sit down to work on it. You don't know where to start. Then you go to the clinic, right? You see your favorite clinician and then you're like, yeah, um, I'm wondering would you play over to C minor seven card? See what I mean? It's the same thing over and over and over and over. So what you want to do is you want to figure out an easy way where you can implement these things, okay? an easy way where you can implement them. So, I put on my groove. 
and we're talking super simple here, but I just want to hear what they sound like. So I might go like this. Well, that sounds pretty cool. That sounds good. And also, now I'm already an experienced guitarist. So are you, so are the people, most of you guys watching. So what I want to do is I want to try and play them with some kind of interesting rhythm. And what is something that I definitely can play over this? Most guitarists. Right? Everyone can do that. Everyone can do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strategy of playing one of those triads along with my blues licks, okay? One of them. Perfect. I did it. I did it. I'm on the road to answering that age-old question. Read the thumbnail. <laughs> So then I sling two of those things together, right? Blues first. Right at the end there. Is that what I did? Yeah, I think it's something like that, right? I played the two triads. I played um, and I played an E flat, and then I played my F. So now I have a, a mode, not a guitar mode, but a modality by which I can start implementing things that are maybe a little bit more advanced than what I actually know. And now that's how I start learning them. Now, this is a fast tempo. So what I would do is I would slow the whole thing down and maybe go like this. Okay, so now I'm gonna play. So now I'm starting to be able to implement advanced concepts to what it is that I already know. That's, I really like teaching this sort of thing. There's a million guys who are going to talk about, you know, um, pentatonic flat two, flat six, and all, all sorts of advanced stuff like the, um, this thing that I, the other video, that, that, that pentatonic thing that I did. Um, the hidden, hidden pentatonic of melodic minor. But a, a lot of times we are, we're either reaching way above our ability, which is fine and dandy, but a lot of times it shows in the playing. So what is really the answer to the question of what are you thinking? I can tell that I can say as I suppose I'm an advanced player, maybe an age. Um, I suppose as an advanced player, what I am thinking about is trying to connect. This is one of those answers that you hear at college that, or, or elsewhere in interviews that make very little sense to people. It's a cool thing to listen to because it's um, ethereal, it's spiritual. And from that perspective, it's really interesting because when somebody says that they're trying to connect to their, their inner car when they're playing, that's inspiring to hear. So there's a lot of value to that. And I encourage trying to search out people talking about that because it's very easy to get down on yourself. 
uh, when you're playing music. It's very easy when this is your arena, um, my room, which seems very well lit on, on, I'm looking at the monitor here, but it ain't. I don't know why it looks that bright. It's actually very shadowy back there. Um, so when, when this is your arena or my arena, or this is your, you have your bedroom or wherever else it is that you're playing, it could be, you, you need that spiritual encouragement to keep pressing forward because this could be very claustrophobic and it could be very dead sounding it, um, spiritually too. So, and I'm not talking about, you know, the big man up, upstairs or what have you. I'm talking about specifically how to keep things fresh. So there is that answer that you hear to the question, which is like, I'm trying to tap into what's in here. I'm trying to express what I hear. That's a whole nother video. Um, it's just that I was thinking about this because I've heard this question hundreds of times from hundreds of different people. And it is the, the, the answer to it, I think actually is probably not outside of you, but probably inside, which sounds weird because yeah, you want to hear what, what, what is Alan Holdsworth thinking? Um, I think that you can find out more or less what he thought about at one point in his practice by, you know, investigating the notes. That requires also for you to have the tools to slow things down, for you to, um, sorry, I just got, I just distracted myself. Um, it requires you to be able to slow things down and to have some sort of analytical approach to what it is that you're seeing. Um, I'm going like this, like as if you're reading music, but no, you're going to write the music if you're trying to figure it out or what you're going to do is you're going to play it on your guitar and then you're going to figure it out that way. That requires a whole nother set of analytical skills. That means that you need to be able to figure out the cards, <laughs> figure out the notes themselves and have all the proper tools to be able to do that if these can't do it without any kind of um, digital help. Um, so what I would suggest is look inside to find the answer to other people's, what are you thinking? Because then you can find out what they've practiced. Okay. So if you hear somebody that is doing over that, that same groove, well, right there, I was, they, I played, um, an E flat triad and F triad. These three notes, which aren't really a triad. I mean, you can argue that, but just, but, but let's get to this one. So what I would do is I would take those three triads and then I would implement them in my own improvisation. So whether your, your groove is like this, to create my own answers to that question that I was asking the big guys. And I think that that's really, really an important um, strategy. Um, it might seem simple. Um, it might seem like I, I can't believe he made that really nice thumbnail just to give me that message. But I would again implore you to employ the technique of breaking things down from your favorite players, but then slowing everything down, not taking on board that you have to know all the inversions at the inception of doing it. It's just, it's just so typical of teachers to say that you have to know all the, um, all the inversions all over the neck from beginning to end and then of course they give you the demonstrations you know and it's it's just confusion 
right? Of course you need to know them all over the neck and that is what takes the time. And if you're okay with that, then this all should make sense to you. Do you guys have any questions? I'm just like blah, blah, blah. And I, I managed to lose everybody who is in the room, which is, I'm used to that. Any questions? I'm oh, sorry, Sebastian, I, I need new glass prescription. How are you guys doing? I just saw that. Wow, it's nice to see that you guys are, are I hope you still want to be my students after seeing all this. I use profanity. You know, sometimes that happens, especially in Miami. <laughs> How long have I been going, la la laying? How long have I been playing? Haha. <laughs> um, I started when I was six. I should be a lot better. <laughs> I should be a lot better. Um, why didn't I ever learn about the bebop scales? Oh my God. How long have you been watching this, Ron Kijo? You know, I don't know why you never learned it, but did, did you ever learn the, the amazing fingering for the bebop scale? That is the fingering. That is the fingering, RJ. And thank you for gracing this. Did you hear the part where I used profanity? That should have sounded familiar. Um... Didn't I teach you the bebop scales? <laughs> Thank you for showing up, man. That, that means a lot. I'm sure you've already left. Or maybe you've tried to throw some um, old fruit at your camera. It's understandable. You want me to do that for you again? Check this out. Oh, no, that's wrong. I don't know why I didn't do that that earlier. But um, have any of you been guilty of asking that question? Yeah, what are you thinking over... Um... Yeah, smart man. You're a smart man. That's why you're the... That's why you're a YouTube king. Why do all guitarists... Hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. And I'm happy... I I'm proud to have you as a student, actually. Um, why do all guitarists play those bluesy licks? Now, RJ would be a great guy to answer that one because <laughs> there's a lot of, there's, a, there's funny answers to that and then there's some, I mean, the guitar just sounds so good playing that, you know, those bluesy um, licks. Um, it just sounds really great. Um, it's also that, there's a historical reason to that too. Um, I think if we look at the guitar center reason is it's just easy to play. It's one of those easy things to play. Now I put easy in quotations because for a beginner this is like really super hard. <laughs> from the Congo living in Ern. Um, it's it's a that stuff's not easy to play for me I, I don't know that's pretty hard I think that that stuff's really hard to play so it's hard to play 
bluesy stuff well and then the aficionados would say it's hard to play it correctly. So guys, um, wow, I'm up to 30 minutes now. I didn't want this to be too long. One time I did a three hour live stream. I mean, I don't know. I think maybe I ate dark chocolate before I did it and I was just, um, I hope that this helps. I really do. It's just one of those questions. Whenever I hear it, I'm wondering what the person who's asking the question is thinking. Like, where is the, um, where is the disconnect? Like, where, where, where did their knowledge stop and what are they interested in? Um, no, it's not a stupid question at all, man. Not at all. There are no stupid questions. As the old expression goes. Um, now, don't worry about it, mate. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, like I was saying, I'm wondering like where their knowledge ends and like what is, is, you know, I've thought about it a lot, like, and I think I've asked the question a fair amount of times, but I was wondering like if, for instance, if there was a specific card, like if we use that one example, if there's this card, which is a B, chord and the person played I don't think I would ask what are you thinking when you played over that I would ask what did you play exactly over that card um, and maybe you would be able to get an answer that way it might be two ways of asking the same question basically there's um, a vacant, vacant place in their um, improvisational knowledge. And I believe that that's where that question comes from. But I've heard so many different answers and it just made me want to make this video. So lads, I really hope that you found this um, entertaining and um, maybe get, it'll get you to think about that question itself. And also get you practicing in a way that's um, that's going to be able to produce some really good results because that's really all, all I care about is you sounding better than me and surpassing me, much like RJ's done. And um, as far as anything else goes, really that's that's pretty much all about it, or that is about it. Um, one more chance for any questions there. I wonder how it would sound if you played the same rhythmic ideas but use all the notes of B flat. Well, I was just playing an E. How about if I play that same that same rhythm in um, B flat?
That was like one of the first sweeping things I'd ever learned was Still can't do it Or maybe now <laughs> It's a sus chord It's a sus chord So yeah, that's a different key right there Same thing, different key uh, You don't have access to like an open chord I guess you could do that, right? Oh, over a loop. Okay. Yeah, um, sure. I could do that over a loop. You mean like play single note solos? I've never played this. What? <laughs> this six major six chord. Plus eleven. Um, which key? E or B flat? Uh, B flat or E? Oh, I thank you, man. The uh, sharp eleven chord I had. This one. Um, I won't be able to do like a. a this one, I, I don't know which one you're talking about. This one, this one. That one's not gonna make for a good like comping. I mean, I won't be able to play like a blues vibe over that. I don't think. I think it'll sound bad. <laughs> um. That's like an anteater. That's like walking towards the. No, it wasn't C, it was E, but I could do it in C. Some kind of blues thing in C. You know, one of these things when you're when you're playing like finger style, um, and you're 
your, the corners of your nails like start to get caught. You're doing all that plucking, all of that mother plucking. <laughs> So there you go, savage. Yeah, I've been accused of that. <laughs> I know. Hey, Velazar, how's it going, man? Where are you from? Sorry, I have to look off to the side. This text is so small and I'm so visually impaired. Bilzar, did you fall off? <laughs> Anyways, guys, um, let's just keep it at that. I hope that um, that helps helps you somehow. And um, thanks for sticking with me on this Saturday afternoon. And um, greetings from Bulgaria. What? Wow, man. That's fascinating. Well, hello from Miami. Little Miami, which is uh, quite a distance away from Bulgaria. And there's, last I checked, a lot more bikinis here in Miami. But I'm sure there's more Bulgarian women choirs in Bulgaria. So I'm going to try and sign off again. It seems like this was a bit of fun. So I hope you had fun and you got something out of it. And... Um, there you go. Take care, guys. Thanks a million. Really appreciate it from here.